Hey guys, what's up? It's Taylor. It has been a second. I'm sorry, I feel like this is all the time, but I have a real excuse this time, okay? Flight school. You guys ever get that green juice? It's literally my favorite. So good. <laughs> So back to today's video and yeah, the reason I've been AWOL, which I tend to do that, but I am in Army Flight School and so I thought I'd do a update for you guys what US Army Flight School is like. I am more than halfway done with the school. I just finished Common Core, so waiting on graduation for that and then I'll go into my advanced airframe. So I'm going to kind of just talk to you guys a little bit about what it's been like so far, what to expect if you're looking to go to flight school and um, just like my experience with it. So just like a little flight school update and what army flight school is like. I tell you that's one thing about flight school. It has taught me how to be an excellent note taker. I had to really learn to be organized because it's so much studying and so much school and stuff. Uh, they always joke that my notes were the neatest because just look at how organized. But anyways, yeah, so I took notes for this. All right, so yeah, so where it all started, I got here back in July. I in process, got all settled in, and then I started Bullock. Bullock itself was five weeks, I want to say. So within Bullock, you have, oh, uh, what was first? Every time, so apparently what I'm hearing is it gets it gets uh, changed around like all the time and they're always switching like the order of stuff and how things are done. But overall, you're gonna have like a combat vehicle ID test. Uh, it's a exam over a bunch of different military equipment throughout different armies and you have to like identify them. Uh, you have that, you have land nav, you have the range and you have to qualify on the pistol and the, M, uh, the M4. And then, so you have to do that and just some basic officer stuff. So Bullock wasn't too bad. Yeah, probably the longest of the courses just because you feel like you're like, let's get this over with. Like I wanna do flying stuff, I wanna do aviation and it's really nothing to do with aviation. But anyways, that's Bullock. And then after there, you go into SEER school. I had a two week hold before SEER school. So, and then I went into SEER school and did that. And can't talk about SEER school, but <laughs> it was a fun time. It was a great time. Learned so much. I will say that I did learn a lot, but yeah, you just gotta go and experience it for yourself. Um, interesting, interesting school. Uh, after that, you go into Common Core and I went straight out of SEER school into Common Core, which I did not prefer um, just because I would have liked to have had like a little bit of a break to just kind of recover. I think I lost like 12 pounds. So I was like, I need a break, but I had nine days off. Uh, and I went straight into common core, which now I don't regret it. I went through with like all of my best friends and also I just got it done faster, you know, just rip off the bandaid. So into common core, you start common core. We had two weeks of ground school. Mostly our ground school was done online. I mean, they would teach it and then we would do like our practice exams, exams like all online. And so that's how we did that. Ground school is kind of a blur. I think they taught like a big overview. And at that point I was like, I don't really know what's going on. So it was, it was kind of a blur now looking back, but it also was a really long time ago. And then P1, it is where you go. You actually start flying. It's your primary one. They just, you do traffic patterns, you know, you have your nickel ride on the first day. You just really learn the basics of flying. And then at the end of P1, after your solo, or after your, excuse me, after your check ride, your P1 check ride, then you have your first solo. And it's just you and your stick buddy, you each fly four patterns uh, along, like around the, the little stage field there. And your stick buddy's not allowed to touch the controls. I will say at this point, I was like, I cannot fly like I learned how to shoot an approach like literally the day before the check ride like is when it finally came together for me and still was not good I mean I'm still not good by any means but a million times better than when I was in primary and I just remember that solo just really like helping my confidence a lot because before then I was like I don't know if I can do this like I was really in my head a lot and I think that did not help me and they constantly told me stop overthinking stop overthinking and finally like it came together and that solo like really was like oh I I can do this you know and it was a pretty cool experience just having that solo and then after that we went into P2 um, and then P2 is a lot of auto rotations run on so you do like your emergency procedures and the ones that they let you do you know and then you do like 
we got autos, run-ons, steep approaches, sass off, which you guys probably don't know sass off if you don't fly, but it's basically like the helicopter has its own system that's a stability, just like helps it be a little more stable and you have to fly with it off, which is how most civilian helicopters are. They don't have that SAS built into it. So it was like, you know, good learning how to do that. But I remember then it was very, very hard for me to fly SAS off. And now I don't really even notice it, honestly. So, uh, you know, you grow a lot by the end of Comic Core. You really you really do and another thing with that is they're putting in solos into every phase my class was one of the last classes that didn't have the solos in every phase and now they're putting in like solo cross countries and a solo in like you know in other phases and my class didn't do that we just had the one solo in the Lakota after you know p1 so yeah p2 is like a lot of your emergency procedures i remember this being the hardest for me i was already like i just learned how to shoot an approach and you guys want me to do an auto rotation you know it was very much moving so so fast but that's how flight school is it moves so quick they know exactly how long you need to get something down to check for it and then you're on to the next thing and like that was just so true but i think the further we got along the faster i was able to pick things up Whereas in the beginning, I really did need till the very end to like figure that stuff out and I was like really cutting it close and you know, I'd end up still doing well on my truck rides and I think a lot of it's just mental. By the end of Common Core, it was, it was pretty laid back for me. It was, it felt a lot more, a lot more natural, you know, but that's really with anything. And then after that, you go into BI, which is your basic instruments. This is four weeks. I want to say, I don't remember it's three or four weeks. I think we had three weeks because our primary two, like our P2 check ride ended up going into it because we got weathered a lot. But BI is all in the Sims. You are straight up learning how to fly instruments in the simulator. I remember this for us was December into January, which was like perfect time because it was cold here. And even though we're in Alabama, like you all know, I was like in Miami before this. So it was like 50 degrees, but yeah, so that was BI all in the sims and then lots of academics like throughout all of these phases you have flight line half the day and then you go to academics it was long days and then as soon as you would get home you'd have to study more and then try to get you know maybe six hours of sleep wake up do it all again and if you were morning flight line you had to be there at like like 5 30 in the morning i would wake up at like four in the morning so yeah getting sleep was really really important because it was really long days and then after bi we went into ai which is our advanced instruments uh we had a cross country which wasn't it wasn't super far but they make you fly longer distances and and just everything is flown with straight instruments which was super cool flying four five thousand feet in the air flying through clouds i remember days it was raining and i'd be flying out of clouds and and you just would see nothing but gray, couldn't see anything, couldn't see the ground, and you just would have rain coming at you as we're flying through rain clouds. And I'm just following like a glide slope that comes up and just following my approach in, and all of a sudden you just pop out of the clouds and there's the runway. That was the coolest thing for me. I loved AI, it was definitely my favorite phase. And we got so much free food because a lot of the airports around here, we'd fill up for gas. And so like you could go in and get free food. So get like Chick-fil-A, macaroni, chicken nuggets. I love AI. But I also like flying upper boats and I also want to fly airlines or something like that. And so I really enjoy that level of flying, you know? And after that, BWS was the next phase. BWS is your basic war fighting skills. It's a lot of tactics while flying. So if you can imagine all the infantry stuff that you learned or basic ROTC field tactics, put that into a, a helicopter and that's pretty much what BWS is. It's broken into three phases. So first is a lot of planning. I remember the first night it took me six hours to learn how to use the computer program to do the flight planning. So I had to do that and then every night just hours and hours of planning so that phase was only a week and a half thankfully i don't think i could have taken much more like i was losing my mind at that point point. and then phase two is goggles i loved goggles i think i got well by the end of it i did not love it i was over goggles but in the beginning it was it was really good i think i got the most experience and most confidence from this phase but mainly because my ip and he we were flying goggles with just like sass off he would just cut our sass he'd have us doing like a whole bunch of different um, maneuvers with the goggles that just made me so much more confident in flying. I was like, oh, I could do this with goggles. I came off and we went back into phase three after goggles and I was such a better pilot just having had done that at night where you lost so much of your senses. Um, it just really helped a lot. But yeah, so that was goggles and you don't have class. So you just show up at like 
4 30 well we showed up an hour before because rip wanted us to talk and like you know do some table talk before um so we'd show up at like 4 30 we'd fly to like midnight or something like that i get home at 12 30 and then phase three just kind of puts it all together it's a lot of the actual tactical flying you're planning a mission and you're going and doing that so yeah that's how common core is and then we're done and so now i'm in this in between we have graduation next week so this graduation is pretty much for the active duty guys because they have no clue what they're flying As you all know i'm national guard so i know that i'm flying blackhawks so yeah it's pretty much for active duty guys to figure out uh what aircraft they're getting and where they're going to be stationed but we'll be there to support them and we walk the stage and act surprised you know so there's that and then i'll go into the blackhawk course after this that's four months it's a month and a half of academics and then the rest of it is pretty much just flying. So I hear you have a lot more free time, but you're a lot more uh, responsible for your own academics. So yeah, they won't have academics the last three months, but that's your responsibility to, you know, be learning and studying what you need to study. So you're ready for like, those check rides and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so that'll be four months. And then after that, we have our advanced leadership course, which is the last three weeks of flight school. And then we're out of here and I'll go back home. And so overall, my opinion on flight school is it is a lot of work you do not have a lot of time you are studying on your time off weekends are pretty much the only time you have off and your sundays are pretty much reserved for studying and just meal prepping getting ready for the week but those saturdays that friday night you know that's the only time you really have to just go relax and you know that's that's what we do we try to just like recollect ourselves and not go crazy but yeah fly school is a lot but overall it has a hundred times been worth it i think i have learned so much about myself in just these last you know since july however many months that is but then i have before you know before that like i think flying in general is it's very tough and it's hard to just pick it up when you know nothing about it but it's so worth it just the confidence you get in yourself and your skills and just what you can do is so cool and it's just cool when it all clicks and you're finally like wow like i'm doing this you know it's not as scary as it used to be and it just becomes more natural so 100 times it's worth it if you guys get the opportunity to go to flight school branch aviation i recommend doing it because it's so much fun but just be ready to work your butt off and you know be ready to study and stuff like that that's all for today uh, i'll talk to you guys later peace love you guys bye <laughs>